Righto boys and girls, really nice Thunder VZ L98 six speed manual ute here. Uh, for a few things, mostly a retune, he also wants some CNC ported heads, etc. But it has also been making a really, really strange noise that he has managed, not managed to diagnose himself. Uh, and I say that because he actually did do quite a bit of diagnosis himself. Uh, we had an extensive chat when he dropped it off. He tried running it without power steering, like without an accessory belt, without the ACL belt. He tried to eliminate as much as he could from the whole setup to try and figure out what the noise was. Couldn't figure it out basically ended up just bringing it here and, and you know he wanted to get this head CNC'd anyway and asked us to investigate and try and diagnose the issue so we spent the last two days on the dyno just diagnosing uh Rex fixed up the tune cleaned it up it was dog rich pig pig rich wasn't making hardly any but Rex picked up 20 horsepower just on cleaning up the fuel with the same timing so it's a lot nicer now than it was but we still got to pull the heads off and get them CNC'd etc anyway now we yeah I've tried to get it to make this noise for the last two days we only got it got it to make the noise a couple of times um and not for as long as the owner reckons it does does happen sometimes on the street. Uh, but from what we can tell, the only thing that we can see that's obvious uh, with the logging on the computer and everything else when we do the startups is that when it doesn't make the noise, it seems to be very consistent level fuel uh, oil pressure. And when it is making the noise, the oil pressure does seem to vary quite a bit, a lot more than it should. So that's the only thing that's really obvious to us is that when it does make the noise, oil pressure is very, like there's a lot more variation in the oil pressure. So. Uh, at this stage, we are assuming that it is something to do with the oil pump. S could be a, you know, a um, uh, pressure bypass that's noisy. It could be something else to do with the oil pump. Either way, uh, it appears to us for us to try and diagnose what is going on. We need to pull the front cover and everything off the engine and pull the oil pump off and investigate what the oil pump is, looks like, what it is. Could be a, a number of things, but it, it seems as though given the diagnosis that us and the owner have done uh, it doesn't appear to be anything with the accessories doesn't appear to be anything like that so that's what we're hoping uh, we also fixed a few other things on the car that's been here we had to replace the hard line for the power steering because it was leaking um, so we got the power steering working again uh, the rear sway bar on the passenger side rear arm the bracket had, had broken off the the mount of the, the mount had broken off the arm uh, so rex re-welded that back up and stuff like that so um, we're just waiting on a confirmation from the owner Originally, we were just gonna pull the heads off in the car, send the heads to go get CNC'd, get them back, put them back on. Uh, but given the fact that we now believe that this is an oil pressure issue or oil pump issue, something to do with the pump itself, it's a lot easier for us just to pull the engine. That way we can drop the sump, get at the pump and everything. I mean, by the time you pull the heads off the engine in the car, that's 90% of the loom out anyway. Uh, from there, it's not a whole lot more work just to pull the engine. So that's what we're thinking about doing. Uh, I'm just waiting on confirmation to ensure that he's happy for us to go that way and, and pay for it and try and sort this out. Um, but yeah, that's what it seems like to us. It almost sounds like it could be a vacuum leak, um, but map seems to stay pretty consistent, doesn't change. change. Uh, like I said, the only thing that we can see that's correlating is the fact that the oil pressure is a fair bit more variation when it is making the noise. So that's what we're going off. Fluctuating, oscillating, whatever. Either, either way, it's just, it's the only thing that's correlating between what we can log and what the noise is doing, when it's doing it. So if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck. Probably an oil pump. Oh yo guys, so we're working through this. We found some pretty weird flapping wear on a few things. So what we're doing at the moment is checking the crank run out on the snout. So uh, what we found is a fair bit of wear on the front of the oil pump gears and on the front cover, but not a lot on the housing of the backside. The other thing is the actual uh, gear that is for the keyway for the actual oil pump drive. It's got some really weird wear on sort of one side of it, which correlates with the housing. Uh, however, you'd assume with that that it'd be the housing off center, but if that was the case, the gear would have that marking all the way around, but it doesn't. It has it real bad on one side and not so bad on the other. So our suspicion is obviously this gear is not very well manufactured and it's off, off center, um, or there's a lot of run out on the crank causing wear on one, one side of the, um, the drive. So as you can see, really, really prevalent there. Not so much around the back here. Hardly see it on that one. So something's 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 fingered. Mm. <laughs> Righto guys, this is what we are dealing with at the moment. So I've pulled this further down and I think I found something that could potentially point to our noise. Um, so we've got ourselves a Rollmaster single chain, um, as you can see, Torrington bearing, 
Uh, and as we always talk about, you need to chamfer the inside of these, otherwise the inner diameter of the actual gear rubs on the backing plate, so you've got to chamfer the plate. But as you can see from this gear, it's worn. And it really shouldn't be, because this should stay stationary on the back, or on the front, I should say, of the um, backing plate. So if you come over and look at the backing plate, the backing plate has very obviously, that bearing has been walking on it, or, or moving, that's wear. Uh, so this, this stuff here leads me to believe that I think someone has had a go at chamfering this, um, and there is a slight bit of chamfer on it. I'll find out more when I pull it off properly. So it does look like there is a little bit of a chamfer, but this definitely to me looks like the actual uh, bearing on that gear has been turning. Um, so I wonder if that could be our noise. I wonder if the bearing may be turning against the backing plate, and um, that might be our, our really strange, odd noise. So hopefully that's what it is. Uh, I just decided that while we're at the point we're at, I just wanted to pull this cam out and check the cam bearings. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So we'll keep, uh, we'll pull that cam out, we'll check cam bearings, just make sure they're all good and all that. But um, yeah, between that and the weird, weird wear on the oil pump drive gear, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of think that that would be more likely uh, cause, cause the noise that we were hearing. So anyway, we'll keep going. Alright, so we've got the cam out. From what I can see on the cam bearings, there's nothing alarming, nothing that's worrying me. They look like standard LS cam bearings where they all look pretty crap and cooked, but that's what they all look like. So, nothing to me that would indicate any sort of noise or anything bad. So, um, yeah, at this stage, my sort of money is on what was going on here, really. Um, like, it does feel like... It's obvious that someone's had a go at chamfering it by these marks, but it feels very rough. So I don't know whether someone's just not chamfered it enough and that has been running. Um, I don't know, this whole bearing doesn't look or feel that great. So, yeah, I don't know. don't know what's going on, but I feel like that is very likely going to be a noise. Got some weird wear here too from the chain. The way it's been coming up on the gear. Um, might... I'm going to put the cam back in, I'll chuck this back in and double check that alignment on that chain, but that doesn't look very good on the back of the gear there, so... A few things like that. Hmm. So yeah, maybe new timing set, new oil pump. Put it back together. Have to get rid of this noise. Should probably add as well, when the boys checked the run out on the crank yesterday, there was nothing super out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, nothing out of spec, nothing to worry about anyway. Uh, so the only other thing we were thinking is potentially pull the windage tray off and just pull number one main cap and just have a look at the bearing and just see what it looks like but uh, yeah weird one all right boys and girls the big bad six liter out of the VZ going back together those recycle the lifters cams back in we have our lovely heads back from Tremaniac Racing next gen engineering all CNC ported looking bloody awesome so Bose reset them back up with his valve springs um, and as you saw from the pulling down situation, we've set his original timing set and everything aside. Got a new timing set on there, um, solve that issue, new cam backing plate to solve that problem. Uh, it will be getting a new oil pump, which I uh, didn't realize I actually sent it out in, order, in that order the day before yesterday. So we don't actually have an oil pump here to complete it, but uh, Bo can finish doing the lifters, get the heads back on uh, and have it mostly together. And then we're just gonna wait for an oil pump to get here. but. Can you get this thing back in the car and hope that uh, this has solved all our issues with our noise, but I am pretty convinced it would have been something to do with this bearing here on this thing. So keeping it aside for now just in case, uh, but yeah, hopefully that's that. So anyway, uh, be good to see how we go with our uh, new heads and everything else. Yeehaw. Get it out of here, get some room in this engine room happening because we've got another motor just here that's got to come back into the engine room. All right, guys, the VZ Ute's back inside. We've got our heads back from Next Gen Engineering, all nice and CNC'd. So we've got our engine back together and everything in the front end is all new. So we've got, uh, you know, new oil pump, new timing set, new cam backing plate, all that stuff. So if this thing still makes that noise when it goes back together, uh, we can at least be assured that it's none of that. Um, I don't know, potentially after that, maybe a thermostat kind of deal. I don't know, but either way, um, 
we've uh, pretty much covered all bases as far as the front of the engine about about that noise and hopefully this sorts it out when it goes back together so anyway it's going back in the car keen to see uh, how much difference our CNC ported heads makes uh, in this guys and what's going on keen to get this thing back on the dyno and hopefully not hear any noises Some results because I didn't have time to film last evening after we tuned the car. But results are in. This is what the difference was. So when it arrived here, rich as hell, 423 horsepower. So the difference between when it got here and when it's leaving is quite significant. Um, 35 horsepower, whatever. Um, yeah, decent, decent gain. So 440 was after we retuned it with the stock port heads and fixed the fueling and got a bit more power out of it. So this was just in the tune. And then this is the difference in the CNC heads. So <coughs> 15 horsepower at the wheels, which um, is about basically bang on. So that's what we always tell people um, with these rectangle port heads. They do already flow really well. The CNC port job is only worth about uh, 15 to 20 horsepower. Um, that being said, it's also, although it's not worth heaps of power on the rectangle port heads, it's still very good value for money when you consider how much it costs for a machine shop just to do a basic service on the heads anyway. And in the CNC job, you're getting all of that in a nice little package. Um, so that's what we got working with. So this all being said, the cam in this thing is a, it's a 233-233, which we, we do really like that cam. And we've done, um, I think it's a high torque cam, that one. And we've done some uh, cam tech cams, which were 233-233 in other cathedral ports. And we're a big fan of the cams, however, the cam that we normally put in rectangle port engines has slightly less intake duration and a lot more exhaust duration. So um, the 1287, which we normally put in these in these cars, <coughs> having that intake event shut a little bit earlier means you're going to keep a little bit more dynamic compression in the combo, um, for one. And the second thing is having that extra uh, exhaust duration allows you to get Uh, yeah, allows you to get a fair bit more of that exhaust out, which has always been the problem with these heads. It's never been, it's never really been an issue of getting air in. It's always been a problem of getting air out. Um, so I would be interested to see one day if we could do a back-to-back, -back, basically the exact same back-to-back, -back, but using the cam we would normally put in a, in a rectangle port and just see what the difference would be. Um, but regardless, that's still a very good result for, a, uh, you know, just a cam six liter. Um, yeah, CNC heads. 155 at the wheels, happy days. It is a nice little camp, it's just not the camp we put in rectangle port engines. So yeah, given the, given the what the go is, I would be interested to see a back-to-back -back with uh, our cam with a, a slightly shorter ex uh, intake duration and a bit more exhaust to get that gas out of there and see what the difference would be. Um, but even then, like I don't expect maybe an extra five horsepower as far as the difference goes. Um, not overall, obviously, but just as far as the difference between pre and post, you'd expect maybe five horsepower, so they might be worth 20 horsepower, which is still not a huge, it is a pretty big game, I suppose, but um, like I said, the, the biggest thing with the CNC port or program, I should say, is that it's really, really good value for money. So anyway, that's it. The main thing as well is that since the car went back together with our new oil pump, new timing set and stuff, we haven't heard that noise yet. So we'll spend the next two days just driving around, getting it warm, see if that noise comes back. But so far, it appears that the noise is fixed, which is basically the main reason it came here. So hopefully we're all good on that and it's all happy days. So anyway, that's the result. 455 at the wheels. Anyway, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Smash the like, smash the subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out. See you, bye.